Well, good morning once again, and welcome as we begin in this morning. It is, uh, depending on how you want to count it, it's the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. It is the third week in our series of uh, this um, series that we're calling One, that is uh, centered in uh, the, uh, the letter to the Ephesians from the Apostle Paul. It's also the fourth week uh, that we are joining together with our brothers and sisters in Christ at Emmanuel uh, Lutheran Church in Lethbridge, Alberta, as uh, we are doing our own live stream uh, here at Concordia. Um, this is our, our online only service. We'll be gathering at uh, 11 o'clock our time for our in-person worship this morning. Uh, but uh, it's our privilege once again to, to share this with uh, with those at Emmanuel. And as we begin once again this morning, we're going to share a little bit of the leadership together uh, and also talk a little bit together with um, those at Emmanuel. And so uh, we're going to try this here right now and uh, and bring in uh, one of the elders from Emmanuel Lutheran Church, uh, uh, Tyler Rogers, to uh, bring a greeting both to his church and to, to us this morning. We're trusting that this is going to work the way it's supposed to. Oh, oh. Okay, uh, for some reason we <laughs> we are not getting Emmanuel's feed to our oh here one second one second there we go technical difficulty okay I think you, we're good now do you we're have me now Pastor you. Michael I think uh, I'm feeling much better now yes you you can hear me uh, we can oh, okay this is wonderful. You know, as, as if I wasn't nervous enough standing up here for the last minute with everybody staring at me, you know? Uh, okay, well, thank you, Pastor Michael, for leading us again here today. Uh, welcome to everybody that's here in person. Um, also, everybody online joining us uh, as part of our manual family and beyond. And, of course, those at Concordia in the uh, Penticton area, too. Um, yeah, I have a, a little bit of a confession to make this morning. I was uh, telling the congregation just before we went live here um, that I was going to have a bit of a confession, and that is um, in preparation, knowing that I was going to be up in front of a camera and live streaming, uh, I was about to leave the house this morning, and I quickly realized I have to put pants on um, because there are people here live that are going to see me more than just uh, from the chest up. So uh, so I did, I did put pants on. This was a, uh, a last-minute kind of thing that was thrown together. Um, I do want to say thank you to Chris for leading us on our technology side here today on our communications, getting this uh, coordinated and going here with uh, the folks in Penticton. Also, we're going to have Linda do some readings for us. And uh, for those of us in the Emmanuel family, uh, we are used to having um, some hokey music being played as uh, Linda goes up uh, front to read. Uh, we won't have that today, but it's not because we love her any less than in previous times. But uh, um, in your mind, just put that hokey music as uh, Linda comes up to do the, the readings. It's just a tradition that we have here for uh, an unknown reason. Um, looking forward to chatting with Pastor Michael at the end of the service. We're going to do a little bit of two-way, uh, just hear a little bit about their ministries, share some of ours, and uh, also get to know Pastor Michael a little bit uh, as well. So uh, look forward to that. So um, Pastor Mike, you can uh, take it away. Thank you. Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate that. Sorry for that uh, little glitch there this morning. We're hoping that's the last one we'll experience. Although, again, just as a reminder, I mean, that was happening live from another province. And uh, so we're really blessed to have a, both the technology and the team to be able to uh, put this together this morning. Uh, as we begin this morning, um, we are, uh, of course, maybe you uh, know already, uh, because you're part of our, our Concordia family or just by the way that uh, I am dressed this morning, that this is uh, our week where we, we have a little bit more of our, our traditional uh, format for worship. And uh, so we will have some responses that'll be uh, up on the screen uh, for 
both our Concordia live stream and for you in person at Emmanuel and for Emmanuel's live stream as well. Uh, and uh, we're, we uh, trust that that will all work the way that it's supposed to uh, as well. And then um, our music also, just like last week, is being shared uh, by one of the musicians at Emmanuel, Anna. And she has pre-recorded our hymns for today. And so you will see those uh, in, a, in a different format, in a video format, just like you did last week. And so with all of that, we begin today knowing that our God has called us into his family. He has made us members of his family, and we remember our baptism this morning as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to invite our friends at Emmanuel, to please to stand as you are able as we begin into our service this morning. Just going to make sure we have our uh, make sure we have what we need to have here. All right, beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to have our opening song, our song of praise this morning, and it is one that uh, is is right there in the title, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. It's a wonderful hymn, and I invite uh, all of you at, uh, at Emmanuel together as you are in person, and if you are able to, as part of our live stream, um, to sing together and with Anna this morning as she leads us, Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
We thank Anna for sharing your gifts with us, for leading us in music, even in this format this morning. I invite you to please pray with me. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to invite our friends at Emmanuel to please be seated. And uh, we're going to hear the Word of God this morning, uh, brought to us again. This is live from Emmanuel, and we invite uh, Linda to share that Word of God with us this morning. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Genesis 9, verses 18 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. This is the word of God. Do I just continue reading? Okay. The second lesson is taken from Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 21. And this is a prayer for all the Ephesians that Paul is uh, saying. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may, be, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power to gather with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, to know his love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be fulfilled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. And you may rise for the uh, reading of the New Testament. This is from Mark 6, 45 through 56. And this is the story of Jesus walking on the water. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on the mountainside to pray. Later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. 
Shortly before the dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought it was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. When he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down and they, com they were completely amazed for they ha had not understood about the loaves, their heart was hardened. When they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, the people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on, the, on mats to wherever they heard, him, heard he was. And wherever he went, into the villages, towns, and countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. I just got to do one quick thing here. Sorry about that. All right. That we should be good. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you for your, uh, for your sharing with us today and uh, for being able to uh, lead us and have us hear God's word from those three readings. Having heard God's word this morning, we are now going to confess our faith. And uh, as uh, those of you at, at Emmanuel have just been seated, I'm going to invite you to, to remain seated for this. Uh, but uh, certainly uh, it is also uh, appropriate that we, if we were already standing, we would do that again. But that's that's okay. We can certainly confess the uh, the word of God in, in this way, to respond to the word of God in this way. And I'd invite you to do that together with me in the words of the ancient creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are now going to uh, sing together. Uh, to, again, those of you who are in person to do this together, those of you who are in person with others, maybe in your household or wherever you might be, uh, we're going to uh, sing together our hymn of the day, again, led by Anna on video, Just As I Am.
It is indeed because of the promises, the power of God, that we do come to him in faith. And so as we take some time to meditate on the word of God today, I greet you as brothers and sisters in Christ, both those of you who are connected to Concordia in Penticton, those of you who are gathered in person or on the live stream at Emmanuel in Lethbridge, and those who are joining us, you who are a little glitch there. Oh boy. I'm we're, we're looking like we're a little bit frozen here and uh, hoping that we're not actually frozen but just lagged a little bit there. We glitched a little bit for a moment there. We're having a, a few more technical difficulties than we'd like this morning. Um, we're, we're trusting that uh, that this will continue now. Maybe that's uh, that's all that we are going to experience. But to all of you who are with us once again this morning, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Right about now, about the third week into an eight-week series, things begin to pick up. The introductions and the background info is a little bit in the past and momentum is gaining. Of course, that's maybe, that may be true for us who are taking time to work through these readings and to uh, work through the Word of God in this pattern that we have, where we have multiple readings on a Sunday and we have just short readings and then the next week we take the next reading and all of that kind of thing. Of course, for the Apostle Paul, He's not spent three weeks, very likely at least. Maybe it's been a couple of hours as he's writing. He's pouring his heart out to his brothers and sisters in Christ at Ephesus, and he's writing this letter to them. Or maybe, maybe it's, it's only been a few minutes. <laughs> the way Paul writes sometimes is, is almost literally breathless. It's, it's almost like he can't get the words out fast enough. The, the words and the thoughts of this letter, they just flow. It's hard to get a sense of that when we take only a few verses at a time and spread them out over a number of weeks. So I, I would encourage you that maybe sometime this week, if you haven't done it already, or if you have done it already, then do it again this week. Take some time and, and read this letter to the Ephesians in one sitting from beginning to end. It'll only take maybe maybe 10 minutes or so, and you'll get a, a better feel for how all of these thoughts are connected to one another. That Paul, even though we've spent now three weeks and we'll spend a few more weeks meditating on this, and it's certainly not a bad thing to do, but as Paul is writing... Those thoughts just come one right after the other. And the ones who would, who would have originally heard this would have heard the letter in its entirety. And maybe that's one of the best words to describe this letter to the Ephesians. And that is connections. It, it's, a, it's a letter about connections. For us here at Concordia in Penticton, we have some, some guiding words for our congregation. Many congregations will have a, a mission statement or a vision statement or some kind of guiding principles. And, and so very often those are thought through, they're developed and they're written down and they serve as guiding principles and statements for the congregation. Well, we have these uh, statements and we, we really distill all of that down to about three words. They are words that describe what we want to do as a congregation. The first word is reach. That we want to reach out with the gospel of Jesus. We, we don't want just to sit with it here in our possession, but to actively reach out and to offer it to people. The third word is equip. And now we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a few weeks, but, but we want to be equipped as the people of God with the Word of God, to be able to live life as His people in the midst of a world that, let's be honest, is becoming increasingly hostile to God and His Word. And so we have classes and studies and groups and people, they're centered in, in God's Word, and they help us be equipped 
for living life as Christians in this world. You may have noticed I went from the, the first to the third word there. The second word that we have in our guiding statements and our vision statements is connect. Reach, connect, and equip. We want to connect people to God and to one another. And really, this is all centered on God's Word, isn't it? People get connected to God by His Word. His Word creates and sustains faith. And because of that, because they are then people are connected to God, they are then also connected to one another. This is what God has called us to do, to reach out with the gospel, to connect people to God and to one another, and to be equipped so that we would live lives that are meaningful to others and that they would bring glory to God. Now, maybe the way that we express that is unique to us as a congregation here in Penticton, but, but the calling isn't unique. Every Christian congregation is called to do these things, to, to be about the Word of God, to proclaim it, to live according to it. To, as one of my favorite old prayers says, to hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest that Word of God. It's all about the Word of God. And part of where we get our guiding statements from, um, certainly uh, all of our guiding statements, but especially as we think about it today, the part about connecting. Part of where we get that from is this passage in Ephesians chapter 3, that you are connected to God by faith. And through that same faith, that same gift of God that we talked a little bit about last week in Ephesians chapter 2, through that same faith, you become connected to one another because it is the same faith given by the same God. It's the same gift. It's the one Christ who has given us this gift. And, and one of the word pictures that Scripture uses for these connections that we have as God's people is that of family. The word picture is of family. The Bible talks about the, the church in many different ways, and one of them is family. A couple of weeks ago, you may remember from Ephesians chapter 1, we heard about it in terms of adoption. That you, each one of you who believes, you have been adopted into the family of God. That God is your Father, and you are His dearly beloved child. Paul expresses it this way today, as we heard Linda read it. He says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. And of course, bowing the knee or sometimes standing as is our common practice here, at least in our congregations. But kneeling is also a, a, certainly a very appropriate way to pray. I bow my knees before the Father. It's a posture of, of humility and reverence. Before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. He begins, for what reason? For this reason, he says. Well, what reason is that, we might ask? Because, again, that's where we started our reading. Well, if you go back, you'll, you'll see that he actually starts it in chapter what we know as chapter 3, verse 1. He says, for this reason, and then other words flow. He changes his thoughts, and then he comes back to his original thought here in verse 14. And so he's saying, for this reason, and for the reason is, leaving right off where we left off at our reading last week at the end of what we know as chapter 2. Because all of the those that he is writing to are fellow citizens with Christ. They are all one people in Christ. They have all been brought into a state of peace, of reconciliation with God. It's for that reason that Paul is giving thanks and praying for them. Paul is not just praying for them. Because this is true of you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. If Christ dwells in your heart through faith, you have his strength in you. 
You have His power in you. You have His Spirit in you. Your inner being, as you heard that phrase, your inner being is the new creation that you are in Christ Jesus. See, to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in your inner being is exactly the same as to have Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. Isn't this a comforting thought? God has recreated you in Christ. He has brought you peace with Him through the cross of Christ. He has nailed your sin to the cross. He has crucified it. He has buried it. He has triumphed over it. See, this is comforting because God has called each congregation, which is made up of us, all of us as individuals, He has called you to live according to His Word and to proclaim it. And you do that both in formal ways in the congregation, even just like now with preaching and teaching and and those sorts of things, but also in informal ways as individuals, according to the way that he has called you, the ways, I should say, the multiple ways that he has called you, we call this vocation. It's living the Christian life according to the ways that God has called you, has placed you into different offices, different stations in your home, in your workplaces, in the the economy, the state, and also in the church. Just like in Ephesus, just like in Corinth, just like in every city in every time, there are failings. If you're honest with yourself and with one another, you fail to live up to your vocational callings and above all, your call to live according to God's Word and to proclaim it. See, we all, in one way or another, live not according to God's Word, but according to our own sinful desires. We all, in one way or another, we take the the light of God's Word and instead of letting it shine before other people so that they would see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven, we take it and we hide it. But Christ, Christ, without, without any preparation, without any work of you cleaning yourself up before God, He gave Himself for you and He covered all of your sin in a robe of righteousness. His love for you is that broad. It is that long. It is that high. It is that deep. Without any merit in and of yourself, Christ saved you. And Paul is praying that the people would know how big God's love is for each one of them in Christ. And dear brothers and sisters, that's my prayer for you as well. Really, whether they express it like this or not, this is really every pastor's prayer for the congregation that he serves. For you who are connected to Concordia, the people of Concordia, this this passage here, this is my prayer for you as your pastor. For the people of Emmanuel, as, as I have this great privilege of being able to be your guest preacher, your guest pastor for a few weeks, this is also my prayer for you. And I know that this is Pastor Lee's prayer for you as well, that you would be filled with faith, that you would know how big God's love is for you in Christ, for each one of you. See, but, but Paul's not done there. He's not done praying. And Neither is your pastor. Paul goes on immediately to, to connect the individuals. See, he's saying, I want, Christ, I want you to know how big God's love is for you so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. He's talking to them as individuals, but also collectively. They are connected to one another. He goes on to say this. After he finishes that phrase, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and established in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all of the fullness, with the whole measure of God. See, notice that the, the word picture has changed in Paul's writing as he goes on from, what again, what we know as chapter 2 into chapter 3. It's changed to become a little bit of a deeper connection, hasn't it? He goes from talking about them as fellow citizens 
to family. They share a common father. They are members of the same family. See, citizens share a, a certain bond because of their nationality. We, as Canadians, we are residents and citizens, of, probably almost all of us are citizens of Canada. And we have that bond in an earthly way. But family, that shares the bond of blood, doesn't it? Paul kneels before the Father, from whom the whole family of God, both in heaven and on earth, takes its name. And he prays that not only would they have faith that's directed as, at God, but they would have love. That their strength would be together because they're rooted, they're established, they're grounded in the overwhelming love of Christ for them. One way to, to help us think about this is what we often call the, the vertical and the horizontal dimensions of Christianity. We, we think about it maybe in two different directions, but, but they're joined together. And I don't know uh, how well this shows through on the screen all that much, but the, the stole that I wear as, as part of my vestments has um, Greek crosses on it. And, uh, and maybe you can see that on, on either side here where uh, the, the crosses are, it's, it's that cross shape, but they're equal dimensions in each way. They're equal measurements. So it looks, it maybe reminds us of a plus sign that we might be commonly thinking about, but it's, it's called a Greek cross. It's just simply a different shape of, of the cross. And, and we might use that to help us think about this, this whole picture, that the vertical dimension is between God and people. And love is certainly a, a big part of that. It is God's love for you that fills in this, this vertical line. Because of that, God, is, he, is, he has reached down in love for you. And you, as God's baptized, dearly loved child, you love Him too. That vertical dimension is, is a, a very key one in our church experience because it's the relationship between God and you. And it, as Paul says, it's, it's by faith that we actually receive that love of God. You might, again, think about it as a word picture as God reaches his hand down to you. It's faith, your faith that grabs the hand of God's love. And even that faith is a gift of God himself. And so we might, we might think of the vertical line as faith which encompasses God's love for you and your love for him. Then the, the horizontal line is what we might think of as brotherly love. Love for others, and especially for brothers and sisters in the family of God in Christ Jesus. God's love for us enables us to show that love to one another. But maybe you grew up in the Lutheran church, or maybe you've been around for a number of years, and maybe you have experience with the different forms of traditional worship that we have, and maybe you're familiar with one of the prayers that we use after receiving communion together very often. And we here at Concordia will be praying this later on today after we receive communion together in our next service this morning. But we thank God in this prayer of thanksgiving after receiving communion that he has refreshed us, that he has given us this. And the word there that we often use is salutary. The word means life-giving. He has given us this life-giving gift. And we pray that through that same gift, the gift of his grace that is given to us by his word, by his sacraments, that we would be strengthened, there's that word again, right, from Ephesians chapter 3, that we would be strengthened. Here's the phrase that we use. In faith toward you, as we're praying to God, in faith toward you, and in fervent love for one another. Again, there's that vertical line, right? Faith towards you, Lord. And the horizontal one, fervent love towards one another. We sometimes say that, that faith expresses itself in love. That love is the, the first fruit of the Spirit of God working in you. Love is the, the fruit of faith. It's the, one of the fruit of the Spirit as we call about it in, or as we read about it in Galatians chapter 5. All Christians, 
all Christians, not, not just those in our congregation and those in your congregation there at Emmanuel, but all Christians are part of the same family. We are all one family with God as our Father and with Jesus Christ as we read about it in Colossians chapter 1, the firstborn of all creation. Though, of course, not firstborn in the way that we normally think of earthly firstborn children, since we know that Jesus is eternal. But in this word picture of the family, Jesus is the Son of God. He is the firstborn, and we are all brothers and sisters. And this spiritual family, this one family that we are in Christ Jesus, has stronger ties even than earthly families. Now, we always pray that that earthly families would indeed be healthy and strong. But they can fail. But the family of God is held together by God himself. And the family of God can be there with fervent love for each other, even when earthly families are not. All of that is a gift of God. And and how can it happen? By the power of God himself. That's why Paul, again, he breaks out in praise after writing all of this. This section you may have noticed at the end of our reading today that you heard as Linda read it. He breaks out into praise once again. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or imagine, according to the power that is work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It's his power, his grace, his mercy, his overwhelming love that brings you into his family, that gives you a new name, that gives you a new heart, that turns your heart towards him in faith and towards others in love. These are connections that God himself is making in you and among you. And we've been blessed, as I think about our two congregations, we've been blessed to forge some new connections in small ways over these past few weeks as as our two congregations have joined together in kind of a unique way. But God himself has forged the connections between all of us as brothers and sisters in Christ. And those are bonds that will last even into eternity. For this reason... Let me stand before our Father in heaven and let me pray. Let me pray for you, for you at Concordia, for you at Emmanuel, as we close this time of meditation today. Lord God, Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for all of my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, all of those that are connected in today, and all of those that are connected to you and to one another as members of your Christian church. Father, I pray particularly today for your people who are part of Concordia in Penticton and your people who are part of Emmanuel in Lethbridge. You have called them into your family. You have made them all brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray that you would strengthen them with your own power according to your own mercy and grace in Christ Jesus. Lord, let them be strengthened in their faith as they dig deeper into your word. Let each one of them be strengthened in their, in their faith to trust in you and in, in your promises for them. And let them be strengthened together. Let them be strengthened as congregations, as brothers and sisters in Christ in one place, in, in one locality that, that meet in person and that work together in a very particular way. And also strengthened together across the Christian church. We pray for our other brothers and sisters in Christ who are members also with us in Lutheran Church Canada and in your Christian church around the world. Strengthen us today in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Lord, we echo the words of Paul to you. Now to you, you are able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or imagine according to your power at work within us. To you be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And amen. And now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen. Once again, it, it would be at, uh, at this point in the service, 
that uh, we would normally, at least here, uh, gather our offering together. And since we are meeting online at this point, uh, we simply uh, echo a note of thanks. Once again, a, a thanks to God for the continued partnership that we have uh, as Concordia Penticton and for those who have continued to support the work of God and the work of our congregation in, in so many different ways, not only financially, but with prayers, with time, with energy, with the skills that God has given them. And I know that the same is true at Emmanuel and Lethbridge as well, that God has blessed you abundantly there and that uh, you, again, I echo thanks on even behalf of your pastor and your congregation that, uh, that you too are doing the work that God has called you to do as forgiven, loved people in Christ. And, and as you will uh, have your offerings gathered in a, in a different way, maybe there at the beginning or the end of the service, um, we, uh, we again thank God for all that he is doing there among you as well. We're going to go before our God in prayer today, and I would invite our friends at, uh, at Emmanuel and anyone else who would like to and is able to, to please stand as we go before our God, our Father, in prayer as his dearly beloved children. In our uh, format uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to finish each petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy. And I invite you to pray together as you are able with the words, hear our prayer. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. You rule earth and sea and sky. We give you thanks for the blessings of creation and life that come from your abundant goodness. Give to your church everywhere boldness to speak of your awesome deeds and to sing always of your righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. Be glorified in your church and in Christ Jesus. Ground us in love. Give us a faith rooted in the promises of Christ. Give us strength to be able to understand, to comprehend with all the saints his love that even surpasses knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, as you preserved Noah and his family, as you brought forth new life from the ark under the promise of your covenant, bless now our families also. Make marriage as strong and fruitful according to your will. Let your word dwell and rule in every home so that all of the members of the household would be united in forgiveness. Cause your son to dwell in every heart through faith. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord of might, spare us and future generations from wickedness. Give blessing to our nation and its leaders to rule according to your good pleasure. Protect all of those who have been elected and appointed as public servants. Lord, especially today, we remember all of those who are not only called into a vocation of protecting others through firefighting and through emergency services, but who are even laying their own lives on the line so that others' lives and livelihoods may be protected. Lord, as we are seeing and hearing and even smelling and tasting the, the effects of the brokenness of creation around us today and fires in so many places in British Columbia that we know the, the effects that are being, and, and being seen even west of here, east of here as well, Lord, we pray that you would protect according to your own mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through your Son and his reconciling death, we receive all good gifts, healing, and sustaining. We bring before you those who are sick and those who are in need, those that we name now before you even in our hearts. Give them healing and protection. Encourage them in the midst of this life by the recognition of your fatherly providence known in Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We come to you in his name, and we come to you even with the very words that he himself has taught us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We're going to close our time of worship together today with the singing of one more hymn as we are led once again by Anna. And we're going to sing of the, the amazing grace of God. Let's sing together now. Amen. Our bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood in Christ Jesus will last even into eternity. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I want to say a thank you to uh, all of you who have um, 
been a part of our, our uh, service, not only today, but especially uh, in these last four weeks. And what we're going to do is just take a couple of minutes here and uh, try and visit a little bit. And we're going we're to try and make this happen. And so we're going to bring in our, uh, our friends at, uh, at Emmanuel here. And uh, we just need to unmute their microphone there. So we see you and we're going to not, not leave Tyler there. And thank you. Yes. Um, Thanks, Tyler, for that. We had everybody was still right. standing here for you. Oh, I'm sorry about that. See, this is one of those things. We're uh, we're so used to uh, having our our online service be online only, and so there's nobody in the building with us except for a couple of us, and uh, and it's one of those things I just have to remember in person. So thanks, Tyler. Appreciate that. Yeah, um, no problem. We have uh, a lot of technical kind of uh, things to work out here, as as you've seen through the last few weeks. We've been progressing um, you know, a little step every, every week. And uh, uh, one of the things I'm realizing right now is uh, to see you, I have to turn around. So a monitor in front of me would be great. Um, I've actually pushed my phone down with the live stream uh, in front of me, but I see that it has about a four second delay. So just know if you're trying to give me a subtle hint that I'm asking questions that are you know, a little off or whatever, uh, there's gonna be a four second delay. And no also worries. Know, I'll also know if I uh, if I think something's a little risky or whatever, I'll be looking over my shoulder to see your reaction. <laughs> no, no problem at all. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate. So, that. My, my first question for you, Pastor Michael, because uh, you know I confessed earlier, and I'm just wondering: um, Are you wearing pants today? Because yeah, we only yes. see you. Yes, I, I definitely am. Uh, we're uh, yeah, we're we're here for the uh, for the online service here at at nine o'clock, and we are or at least start at nine o'clock our time. We are as of next week, we're going to go back to nine thirty online and start to as we've been using this uh, this again a word picture of of kind of turning the dial a little bit more away from our focus online and more again to our focus in person. So uh, next Sunday will be nine thirty online and then still at eleven o'clock. Uh, here in our time in person. So yeah, I'm, I'm prepared for the in-person gathering as well. <laughs> oh, that, that's good. Um, yeah, and for us, we're going to be remaining at, uh, at 10 a.m. local for the summer, just as, as we normally do. Um, and just as you, I just want to echo Pastor Michael's um, uh, thanks to the people that have kind of made this, uh, this stuff happen. Uh, Chris has been a big part of that, your technical team there as well, Pastor Michael. So um, it's been, it's, 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 it's a, a learning curve. And um, I'll get into a little bit of why we wanted to do this as well uh, in a bit. But uh, thanks to Linda. Um, Pastor Michael, you've probably, of course, you've heard, you know, we're to fear and love God. And you might not understand exactly what that's meaning. Um, I didn't until I met Linda. I, I very much love her, uh, but I sure do fear her. <laughs> that, that, that fear is is uh yeah i mean there's that nuance of respect in that word too right so yeah absolutely yes yes um so uh yeah we uh pastor michael and i talked last night we wanted to kind of keep this very two-way and very kind of uh, natural in our in our discussions here um i think it might be just real appropriate to just discuss why we wanted to do this live stream and why we wanted to try it uh this way um, for, for us uh, here at Emmanuel, um, for those uh, listening abroad or who may not be aware, we're, we're actually a fairly large congregation in, in our synod. Um, we, we are uh, uh, very blessed with uh, many talented people and gifts and, uh, and the availability of um, other pastors in the area to fill in if we, if we are absent for uh, a time. But we really wanted to put ourselves in a bit of a, uh, sometimes you have to kind of challenge yourself and get yourself into a uh, out of your comfort zone to learn new things. And one kind of area that we saw actually even before the pandemic um, that maybe we could reach out is uh, some of the smaller congregations in our area, in our synod, just anywhere um, that, uh, uh, that we could serve beyond our walls, beyond um, our exact local community. And so um, as technologies have kind of uh, been almost forced upon us with uh, the pandemic and uh, restrictions and whatnot for gathering, uh, it's, it's gotten us that much closer to this point where we could um, start doing these video uh, uh, connections to different places. And so we really wanted to push that with, with you in Penticton um, because uh, I know you're a techie guy. And, um, and really just see how we can work this to, uh, to take it beyond our walls and beyond our service here, but to serve, um, to serve the community, to, to serve you know, uh, whoever. Uh, wants to tune in. So 
So that's the, the reasoning behind it. And uh, we thank you so much for joining in on the ride with us, Pastor Michael. Yeah, it's been our pleasure as well. I mean, we, we right from March 2020, when this thing hit, we, we kind of got into this mode of well, what can we do, right? What, what do we have available? Um, and God has blessed our congregation as well to be able to do that. And, and, uh, and so we've been um, live streaming our worship right from really March uh, 2020, um, just with all of the ups and downs in our provincial uh, government and, and the restrictions and kind of changing from time to time. And so we just, one of, one of the things that has been consistent for us is, is we uh, wanted to be able to, even if we weren't in person, and I've we've used this language a lot over the past year and a half, is that we're gathered uh, in heart and mind, if not in person. And, uh, and that has been true for us. So with our experience with live streaming for about a year and a half now, we've learned a lot. And uh, when um, you and Pastor Lee uh, first got in touch with, with us about this and thought, hey, you know, what could this look like? Uh, we started to, uh, to put pieces together fairly quickly because, um, yeah, it, it's just, it, it's something to try. It's something very different. I know it's probably not uh, to everybody's preference in, in terms of how we might be doing it. And yet it, it is a tool that God has given us to be able to bridge these great, big, huge divides that we have in Canada. And as you look uh, farther than just these four weeks, as you look um, farther than even just your own four walls, uh, so we too are, are looking at that as well. And, and even within our, our Okanagan circuit here, which stretches from Kamloops uh, all the way down to Grand Forks, which it's a huge geographic circuit. Um, we have some challenges in, in even just our own circuit in bridging that those physical gaps sometimes. And, and so if we can learn more about how to use these gifts that God has given us to be able to share his word with each other, that's, that's a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, you bet. Um, so just a little bit of context why we reached out to Pastor Michael. Uh, there's a couple of reasons actually. Um, so, uh, for those at Emmanuel that may not be aware, Pastor Michael was actually one of our candidates on our uh, call list when, uh, when we were calling three years ago. Um, so uh, we, we figured there was some compatibility there. Um, but further than that, Pastor uh, Michael has quite a bit of um, extracurricular talents. And uh, I'm, I'm aware of some uh, um, other leadership that he has within our synod. And uh, one of them is communications, something rather is that right pastor michael yeah so i, I sit on our synods uh, communications and technology or, sorry the official name is the committee for communications and technology uh, we're basically a, a sounding board and a resource for our synods communications director uh alex steinke who is is actually fairly new in the in the role uh, she just started last year but uh, we we help to provide uh, advice for her and and support to her, um, but even a little bit more than that over the past couple of years, and really especially with uh, what's happened over the past year and a half, we've we've become more of a resource uh, for our people uh, across Canada in Lutheran Church Canada. Again, just helping to to bridge these physical divides that we have because we have such a huge country. We have about 300 congregations across Canada uh, and, uh, and about 60,000 members. So, I mean, that may sound like a lot at first, but when you think about the vastness that Canada is, it, it, it's a, a relatively small number of people in a huge country. And so we become a bit more of a resource for things like live streaming, for things like video, for things like, you know, internet and, and all of those kinds of things. So uh, I've been able to, to help be one one resource at least uh, for our synod in that area yeah excellent um so pastor michael we've been chatting a little bit uh here at emmanuel um in, in some announcements recently and whatnot um about uh some future planning we're doing here and uh one of those things is our our parish planning council has put together a dream team it's a, a committee that's specifically looking at um uh, basically making a proposal of, of what our, our future uh, could look like as far as uh, bringing in some, some help, some staff to, to further our ministries. Um, and uh, we don't know exactly what that looks like yet. We're still refining that. Um, but basically where it's going, uh, where it look like, looks like it's going is, is we're looking to actually bring some help in specifically for family and youth ministries. Um, we have a, a preschool here. Uh, I know you guys have a school as well. Um, and uh, with our just our congregation size and, and whatnot, we just uh, we feel that we are kind of getting to that area where we're going to need to start um, doubling down on some staff and, and getting things uh, uh, focused, I guess, on that particular side of our ministry. 
Um, I know from uh, from our, our our call uh, with you that, uh, or, or when you were on our call list, uh, that you actually didn't just fall out of heaven as a pastor. Um, it was a, a little bit of a, a journey to get there. Could you share just a little bit about that uh, with us and um, maybe how that might play into our thoughts as we're looking at future staffers here at Emmanuel? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the best way to say it. I think ever I've ever heard, I did not just fall out of a heaven as a pastor. In fact, if those, uh, you know, if, if anyone is considering uh, becoming a, a pastor and, and, you know, though there are those in at Concordia, young, young men or, or young women who might be considering becoming uh, deacons in, in our church, I want to encourage you to pr really prayerfully consider that. Uh, God was working on me for Oh, more than a decade, I would say, uh, into this specific vocation. And yet I've been in, uh, in, in ministry, in full-time ministry, um, for uh, about, uh, well, about 21 years now. So I, I uh, started, um, really, my journey towards church work specifically started with uh, being part of a, a, a team uh, with Crew Ministries. Maybe some of you are familiar uh, with Crew Ministries that has started way back in the mid-90s uh, with the crew. And, and I think many of us across Lutheran Church Canada know them. Um, I toured with, uh, with them in, in 1994-95, and it really opened my eyes to Lutheran Church Canada, to the need that was there. And then there was a brand new program starting at what was then our Synod's University, Concordia University College of Alberta in Edmonton, uh, that was the Director of Ser Parish Services Program. And it was a trained ministry position, but but not a, a pas not in the pastoral office. Uh, one who would be really a, a, a support to the congregation in many different ways. We took classes uh, in youth and young adult ministry in parish education and evangelism and, and those kinds of things. Uh, and that program now is being uh, run and operated by our Edmonton Seminary. Um, so, you know, the, that uh, you may have some connections with them as you talk to Dr. Frim there about uh, uh, possibilities of as you, as you look forward. Uh, but really the Director of Parish Services program is, is intended to be a, a worker in the congregation that helps support the work of the congregation. Um, is Maybe some would see it more as like an assistant to the pastor. I, I would see it more as a, an assistant to the congregation, uh, working alongside the pastor. And so I served in that role as a DPS in Kelowna and then in Spokane, Washington, and then here at Concordia uh, for a total of 13 years. Um, before taking some uh, seminary courses and then being ordained and installed as pastor uh, in 2013 now. So I've, I've served here at Concordia for a total of about 12 years, uh, with eight of those being as, as pastor. And so, uh, yeah, it's um, somebody, somebody had said at one point, you know, you, you kind of took the the quick road to becoming a pastor, you didn't do the full seminary program. And I said, well, no, actually it took about 15 years as opposed to four. Um, it, it's the very slow road, not, not the quick road at all to be, to be uh, into the pastoral office. Um, but uh, it, it's really given me a chance to be able to experience um, some really good things that God has done in, in those congregations. And I was blessed to be a part of that as both a director of parish services and, and now as pastor for the last eight years. Excellent. Um, so I shared with you that we're, uh, we're kind of in this stage of looking at our future a little bit. I could share a little bit of our past, but I'm uh, actually pretty curious. What, what are you guys working on uh, at Concordia right now? Yeah, well, we're actually, it's, it's interesting to hear you say that because we're actually in a very similar position. Um, when uh, when our, our pastor that I was serving with at the time uh, took a, a commission into full-time military service as a military chaplain with LCC, uh, just about a year before I finished my pastoral training. Um, so we had two of us in full-time positions here at Concordia. And then when he took that other commission and then I... Uh, came into this role and, and was installed as pastor, we didn't replace my the, the DPS role that I was serving in. And yet we've kept that in our budget and in our plans over the past number of years. And just last Sunday, uh, after our worship services, we had a congregational meeting where we're, we're now, again, looking in a very similar direction as you, uh, to looking at, at this point, we're looking at about a, a half-time position uh, to be able to come alongside a Yes, both me as pastor, but more importantly, the, the whole congregation and uh, and our school and preschool ministries as well, uh, to be able to look at some of the, those life stages. You know, uh, you mentioned uh, families and youth, and, and th those are so uh, valuable as we see the, the life of our church. Um, and then also uh, 
adult and senior ministries as well, which is a, a particular demographic of Penticton. So we're, we're almost in exactly the same place as you as we're thinking. We don't know exactly the shape of that yet, uh, but we believe that God is still leading us towards that. And, and we're now in a position to be able to move forward, we hope, in a, in a little bit more of a, a defined way. And so we're, we're working on that right now. We're looking forward to our uh, school reconvening here in uh, September in more of a, a normal way after the pandemic, at least almost back to normal, and, and really strengthening the ties that we have in our community as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. The more we chat, the more kind of compatibility and uh, uh, similarities that we have in, in different things. So um, yeah, really, really neat to see. Uh, so Pastor Michael and, uh, and I have actually had a, a, a few opportunities to meet in person um, in different uh, leadership uh, conventions and, and whatnot with uh, um, or leadership opportunities, I guess, as we represented uh, um, our areas or our congregations at different conventions. So the uh, national one uh, in 2017 and then uh, regional uh, district one in 2018. And then uh, recently, actually just, just before the pandemic, um, uh, there was a, uh, um, was that Re regional mission and ministry uh, Council, I Council think that we, yes, that's yeah, right. That yep. There was a meeting um, in uh, Langley that uh, I got to attend and sit with uh, Pastor Michael there. So, um, yeah, it's it's neat uh, being able to chat with you. I, I, I very much look forward to uh, a time that maybe if you're passing through the area, you can come to Emmanuel and uh, and actually see our congregation, our building, our our ministry here uh, live and in person would be would be great. Yeah, and I'll echo the same to you as well. I mean, and, and Dieter had done that last week for us as well, and, and a great privilege to be able to echo that. I mean, we're, um, we're, we're always uh, wanting to welcome others who are maybe just passing through. Maybe you're here for a vacation in the summer or whatever it might be. Um, I, you know, as we've done this, this, uh, uh, co these connections over the past uh, four weeks, it's, it's been, I think, a blessing to, to all of us to just to try something different, yes, but for, for both of our congregations to be able to, to not only know about, but literally see and hear people from other congregations in Lutheran Church Canada, that we, that we are, I mean, the word synod means meeting together, or, or more commonly we use it as walking together, that we are uh, walking together, that we are doing the same things, that we're confessing the same Jesus, that we're singing some of the same songs, and you know, knowing some of the same liturgies and all that kind of thing. Um, it's not just doing the same things, but it's, it's expressing and confessing our faith in a way that is happening not only here in Penticton and in Lethbridge, but all around the country and in fact, all around the world. And so I, I think it's been really good and helpful to be able to, to see and hear some of that happening in real time. And, you know, and, and to me, that's just kind of exciting as we think about uh, how we may, able to, may be able to continue to work together in different ways in the future. Yeah, you bet. Um, and before we sign off here uh, on this, I just wanna share a quick uh, story about Pastor Michael that uh, uh, I think of every time I uh, think of him. And um, uh, I'll give a little context to that. Uh, in, in coming up to these services, uh, typically we would offer a, um, uh, uh, some pay for a pastor that's filling in for, for the service. Uh, pastor Michael said, no, this is something he's gonna be doing anyways for his live stream, so no, no big deal. But uh, maybe our congregation could kinda um, help me out with this. So. Um, now we will get into the story and you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. So uh, convention of the, the, the uh, ABC district here in 2018, Pastor Michael was one of the uh, candidates on the, uh, on the list for, um, for being a regional, uh, the regional pastor. Uh, and he actually made the short list and it was uh, the, uh, the, the Saturday night, I think it was. And um, you know, the, the final vote was gonna be the next day and Pastor Lee and I had uh, a few people back to our room uh, following the convention. One of them was uh, Pastor Michael, one of them was Pastor Mons, uh, Pastor Lunderby, and, uh, um, and the chairman from his church were, were there as well. And um, you know, everybody's chatting and having a good time. And uh, I brought these um, marshmallow caramel peanut butter squares, you know, the ones that us Lutherans really, really love. Well, I brought those there so that I could, uh, if I needed to persuade anybody at the convention to vote the way I wanted to, I would just uh, use these as, as bribery. Um, convention was going well, and I didn't really need to worry about that, so uh, I offered them up as, uh, as a snack when we were, we were uh, meeting there, just uh, as a social after. And uh, I don't know if it was just stress eating for Pastor Michael or what, but he was just down in them like, 
like they're going out of style. So, um, it, it, yeah, I wasn't stress eating at all. I just love them. Love them. <laughs> so, uh, we, we know how that turned out. Pastor Mons is, uh, is our regional pastor now, but, um, every time I think of Pastor Michael, I think of these, uh, these, uh, marshmallow, um, caramel, um, uh, peanut butter squares. So, uh, if anybody here, uh, wants to thank Pastor Michael for, for leading us for the, uh, the last few weeks, um, just, just send them off to, uh, Concordia and Penticton and I know they won't go to waste. I, I yeah. guarantee you. you. You can be assured of that. Yeah. I'll have to, uh, have to maybe um, arm wrestle my kids for them, but, uh, <laughs> but they will not go to waste at all. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> I, I, I knew where you're going with that. As soon as you started telling that story, I'm like, oh, here come the marshmallow squares. Um, we, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great connection point though too. That as uh, you know, as Pastor Mons was elected as our regional pastor and is serving us faithfully in our region in Alberta and British Columbia, and I know that you know he was serving uh, you at, at Emmanuel there um, for a period of time as as you were going through some intentional interim ministry uh, before you uh, called Pastor Lee, which I think you probably, you know this, and I, I don't know how many people in Concordia know this as, as much though, but Pastor Lee was serving just north of us at, at Kelowna, uh, at First Lutheran Church in Kelowna, and he was serving as our circuit counselor as well uh, when he accepted the call to your congregation there. So there was, I, I have to say, there was a, a little bit of um, What's the word? What's the best word? Not bitterness, but uh, sadness and disappointment on our ha on our behalf because we really appreciated his service among us, uh, and, and particularly uh, for me as as he was my circuit counselor uh, for a time. Um, and I know that uh, you know he's certainly we were excited for you when we heard that uh, that uh, he took the call there, and that that you certainly made the right choice in your own call. Uh, and uh, and he, we're we're excited that uh, he continues to serve among you, and and that things. You know, God is really blessing you as as you go there. So, the, you know, these connections that we have as, as members of Lutheran Church Canada, they're really all over the place. Uh, we're, as I said, we're a fairly small synod, even though it's a wide geographic area. Um, but we're really blessed to be able to to get to know each other in ways that maybe in a, a bigger church that we might not be able to do as well. So, so I've not only really appreciated um, the past four weeks and, and getting to know you and, and particularly working with Chris a little bit more. I've really enjoyed that, but I, I'm really excited to see what God does um, both there and, and here and in, in his church all over the place as, as he continues to work. So, so thanks for this opportunity. Yes, thank you, Pastor Michael. Yeah, I appreciate it. So I think we're good to sign off now, however you want to finish it off for us, Pastor sure, Michael. I'll sure, yeah, absolutely. Away. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we, I'll just maybe just leave this screen up the way it is right now. But yeah, thank, thanks so much for, um, and especially for you at, at Emmanuel, that this is, you know, having a, a, an in-person service that's primarily on video. It can be a, maybe a difficult thing, especially with some, maybe some glitches that we had this morning that we didn't have as much before, but, uh, but really appreciate your openness to that. Uh, for those of you at, at Concordia, again, we're going to be gathering here uh, in about uh, 45 minutes or so at 11 for our, our next communion service. And then we're going to continue on as, you know, doing uh, what God has called us to do uh, to the best of our ability and to his grace and mercy. And I know that, uh, that you'll be doing the same at Emmanuel. So again, thanks to everybody who has, um, has been a part of this and, uh, and God has more in store for us. And so thanks very much. And we'll, uh, we'll, we're just going to send it back to our theme slide and we'll, we'll change over our sanctuary here for our in-person gathering. Uh, but God bless you too, as you go have some fellowship time and, and continue in the ministry that he's called you to do. You bet. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Thank uh, you. And we do have coffee time available for all uh, those in attendance today. <laughs>